Okay, thank you for the introduction. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about dynamic binary instrumentation and modification. These are techniques which have quite a few applications in the areas of um, microarchitectural simulation, um, security research, and application development. But before I get ahead of myself, I want to clarify a few terms that I'm using in the title because they might have slightly different meanings compared to what you might expect from other areas. So starting with dynamic, in this case, I just mean that it is something that happens at runtime, so while an application executes. Then binary means that we are dealing with something that um, operates at the level of native code, so without access to a source code. So when we put this term to these terms together, we get the definition of dynamic binary modification as a technique for uh, altering applications at runtime uh, operating at the level of native code without requiring access to a source code. And then for instrumentation, I quite like this uh, definition as the transformation of a program into its own measurement tool. So uh, dynamic binary instrumentation is essentially a specific um, type of dynamic binary modification where the modification consists of uh, inserting instrumentation code into an application. And also have the notions of a dynamic binary modification system and a dynamic binary instrumentation system. So these are simply uh, software runtimes implementing these techniques. Okay, let's get on to more interesting things. So uh, dynamic binary modification and dynamic binary instrumentation are not necessarily very well-known techniques. However, they are the enabling technology behind quite a lot of uh, fairly popular development tools or uh, simulation tools. So in the area of microarchitectural simulation, um, quite a few software simulators use dynamic binary instrumentation. And we also have uh, We also have a tool called APTSIM, which actually uses Mambo, which is our dynamic binary modification system. Um, also, more specifically for case simulation, uh, this is quite often used by application developers to understand the impact of, applica of their applications running um, on a system and the impact on the cache subsystem. So, uh, tools um, such as Volga and Cache Grind are quite popular, and also have a tool distributed with Mambo called Mambo CaseSim. Then, um, uh, in the area of application development, uh, there are tools such as um, call grind, which are able to create a call graph just from the binary code of an application, so just by executing it. And finally, if you wrote C or C++, you probably ran into tools such as Valgrind memcheck, which are able to detect memory error, um, uh, memory usage errors, so for example, buffer overflows. Okay, there is quite a lot that can be said about how dynamic binary <laughs> modification works in practice. Um, I'll keep it brief today. Um, the general idea is that um, all of the code in an application is uh, going to be analyzed and inspected by the dynamic binary modification system before it executes. And then the system uh, implements a set of required transformations to be able to maintain control of execution. At this stage, we also can uh, perform arbitrary modifications of the application, so we can uh, insert the codes to achieve a specific task. Uh, uh, and this is done uh, using um, an API that is provided by the tools. Um, in the case of Mambo, we call, uh, uh, we call them plugins, the software tools that use the API. Uh, another way to think of uh, this is as GTR compilation, which takes as input native code and it outputs modified native code. And there is uh, a downside to, or a disadvantage of this technique in that it introduces a number of overheads. And probably the most significant one is a performance overhead. So an application running under a dynamic binary modification tool will typically execute more slowly than you for to run it directly. More about that a bit later. Okay, now I can finally introduce Mambo. So it is our efficient implementation of dynamic binary modification for ARM, and it supports both 32-bit and 64-bit platforms. Uh, it provides an API which can be used by external users to implement uh, their own tools fairly conveniently. Um, we develop it um, on GNU Linux, and this is the platform we officially support. However, we are also aware of external users running it on Android. Uh, 
Um, so, for example, it's been used by an external group to implement uh, taint tracking for security research on Android. Uh, the code of Mambo and a number of plugins are open source and they're available in our GitHub repository at the URL uh, on the slide. And welcome contributions using that repository, for example, uh, bug reports or patches and so on. Finally, in case you don't have access to a physical ARM system, we provide a virtual machine image for a QMU, uh, which you can run on your x86 machine to try out Mambo. It is going to be fairly slow because of um, QMU overheads, however, it, you can try out quite a few things there. Okay, now you might be wondering why should you use Mambo instead of another dynamic binary modification system, and we think it has quite a few advantages. For example, if you are a researcher and you might want to modify how the dynamic binary modification, modification system works internally, uh, Mambo has quite a small and modular code base. Uh, all of the code fits in fewer than 20,000 lines of code, while uh, other DBM systems uh, might be an order of magnitude larger. I also want to emphasize that Mambo is not just a toy project. In the papers, we usually report results for uh, benchmark suits, so things like spec CPU or Parsec. Uh, however, it, can, uh, it is mature enough to run a fairly large and complex applications. Uh, so for example, we can run LibreOffice in Mambo. Okay, so um, the API that we provide for external users operates um, sort of at two levels. Um, one level is at, um, at using the raw machine code, which can be used, which uh, can be quite useful for uh, things like uh, microarchitecture simulation, where we might want to get every le level of detail about what code is in the application. However, to make things more convenient, we also provide an abstraction layer that can be used to uh, be more productive, and this layer allows you to uh, write instrumentation code which operates um, both on 32-bit and 64-bit ARM, and on 32-bit both in ARM and FAMB um, uh, code. Finally, of the dynamic binary modification systems which can run on ARM, or at least the ones that are publicly available, Mambo has the lowest overhead. And by that, I mean that uh, its base overhead, so running an application without any instrumentation is um, uh, uh, quite low, and also it scales fairly well when running multi-threaded applications on a multi-core system, while other, syst other dynamic binary modification systems might go as far as just serializing every single thread. Okay, speaking of performance, on this chart I am showing um, relative execution time compared to native execution on the vertical axis, so essentially uh, how much slower it is to run an application under a dynamic binary modification system compared to running it directly. Uh, so a value of one means that there is no overhead and lower values are better. Um, this is spec CPU 2006, um, for, uh, compiled for 32 uh, bits. And I'm showing the results for Mambo, so our system and DynamoRio, which is the second fastest dynamic binary implementation that works on ARM. So for every single benchmark, we get lower overhead with Mambo. And in some cases, the difference can be quite significant. For example, Zalang has a lot of uh, function calls and returns, which tend to add a lot of overhead to dynamic binary modification. And here, Mambo has around 60% overhead, while DynamoYo has around 160. So a bit more about the API. Um, it uses an event-driven programming model. So a plugin registers a handler for events it wants to, uh, to handle in some way, and then when these events occur at runtime, then uh, Mambo is going to execute the handlers of the plugins. And typically, you can uh, think of plugins being organized in three parts. The first one is code analysis, so inspecting the code in the application to determine if and what to modify to achieve our given task. Then based on uh, the result of this analysis, uh, we have to actually either modify or create some new code for instrumentation that we insert. Um, finally, um, plugins also will have to deal with some, uh, well, they don't have to, but usually they would want to deal with some runtime events <coughs> such as the application executing uh, system calls or uh, creating new threads, terminating threads, and so on. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have um, an abstraction layer which allows developers to implement uh, their uh, instrumentation codes uh, once and execute it uh, both on 32-bit uh, and 64-bit applications. And we also have the mode that allows access to a raw machine code. For example, this is what we use quite heavily for our uh, timing simulator. All right, and uh, we also have something that um, can be quite useful when um, for, for the performance of on uh, multi-threaded applications. We provide quite a lot of facilities in the API to allow uh, the instrumentation to be to be thread private uh, for as long for as long as possible, for, for as much of the work as possible. Uh, so this avoids global synchronization. We distribute a number of plugins with Mambo. Uh, the first one, uh, branch count, uh, it sounds quite simple. We essentially insert dynamic execution counters that are uh, uh, specific to each type of branch. Uh, in this case, we count separately for direct branches, indirect branches, and returns. Uh, however, what's interesting about this plugin is that um, it shows how to write uh, portable code. So this uses the, the abstraction layer in the API, and it works both on 32-bit and 64-bit platforms. And the counters it inserts are 64-bit uh, on 32-bit platforms as well. So these are thread-safe counters. Uh, we also have a cache um, hierarchy simulator, so it's configurable. You can change the size of the caches, the number of ways, and so on. Um, we also have a plugin to obtain, uh, it's called mTrace, um, and it obtains uh, traces of uh, memory accesses by the application. So essentially logs of every single uh, loader store done by an application. And we also have a plugin uh, to show how to completely replace instructions from the application. Uh, you might know that on 32-bit, uh, the hardware divide instructions on ARM are optional. So this plugin allows us to take software that is compiled for cores with hardware divide instructions and uh, replace them with a software emulation routine to run them on hardware which doesn't have these features. So this sort of concept might also be useful if you want to um, to prototype some sort of uh, accelerators, and you might uh, emulate them in software using Mambo. And lately, we've been working on a memory error checker. So this is essentially quite similar to Vargain's memcheck. It detects errors such as buffer overflows, invalid use of uh, freeze, so double freeze, and so on. Uh, we hope to have this in the code repository by the end of the year. Uh, so the plugin itself is uh, quite mature at this point, however, it uses some new functionality we've implemented in Mambo, which is not quite ready yet. In summary, um, Mambo is our dynamic binary uh, modification implementation for ARM. Um, it has uh, very low overhead, and um, it has a small modular code base which can be useful to researchers. In addition to that, it provides an API which allows access both to the raw native code and to an abstraction layer which can improve productivity. If you are interested in more about how um, Mambo works internally, we have this paper from uh, Taco, which essentially gives an overview of the system and some of the earlier optimizations we have implemented. And we also have um, a second paper from ICP this year where we describe uh, some of the more advanced optimizations. Uh, so this is what allows us to get to achieve the results I've shown on an earlier slide. And everything, by that I mean the source code for the Mambo system itself, for plugins, is available in our code repository on GitHub. Um, also, these two papers are available to download for free from there, and we have um, some slides from an earlier uh, tutorial we ran on using Mambo's API. All right, and I'm going to run a tutorial on, uh, on Mambo at uh, the PAC conference in uh, November. That's it, thank you. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so do we have any questions? This is the first one already. <coughs> 
Okay, so uh, in terms of the memory check plugin, uh, which kind of technique have you implemented to detect memory issues? It was fuzzy, dynamic symbolic execution, which, which type? Uh, so we use a, a shadow memory. So we keep track of um, at the level of um, one byte, keep track of um, all of the valid memory locations in, in application. So at runtime, if there are invalid accesses, we detect those using the shadow memory and report them. Okay, any other questions? I'm walking now because we have a bit more time now. I, think I have two questions. Firstly, the, um, the, the generate instructions you maintained is per thread or per program? Uh, do you mean the code cache? Yes. Uh, because you it, said you 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 seem to mention uh, you can do multi thread on multiple processor. Yeah, so uh, the one the code cache is um, always thread private, which is um, what allows us to get good um, what well, low overhead for uh, instrumenting multi thread applications because uh, it generally allows pretty much all of the instrumentation logic to execute in a single thread without much synchronization globally. Okay. So this goes very well to current ARM systems where you might have up to eight cores, let's say. Okay, I think my second question is, uh, do you maintain the program order in your generate uh, binaries? Do you mean in terms like, of? Like you do, a, do, do you out order, load, store, you know, those operations? We don't do any transformations which would affect the correctness of a program. Okay as long as it follows the ARM architecture specs. Okay, thank you. Okay, and more questions? So here's a cheeky question. Some of the very early work on dynamic binary modification um, had the objective and perhaps made rash early claims that they could make programs not just go not much slower, but even a little bit faster. Um, I wonder if that's on your agenda and whether you see any ways by which that might be achieved. Um, yes, that, that's quite interesting. It's something that we've looked at um, for a while. And um, to be honest, in some cases, for some specific workloads, we have been able to get performance better than uh, just running the native code unmodified. However, it is something that is quite difficult to understand because of the somewhat limited documentation about um, the microarchitectures and about the performance counters that are available. So in some cases, it is not exactly clear why this is happening. So it's pretty much impossible to make it consistently, to work consistently across different workloads. Yeah. I, I think, for example, people looked at things like um, inlining, in profile-directed inlining that you might do at runtime, even on a plain ordinary binary. Yeah, I think we've tried um, to do some inlining at some point. And uh, essentially, in some cases, you can get better performance. In other cases, you start running into um, iCache misses introduced by this or additional branch misses. It's I'm not very optimistic that you'd be able to get this to work very well across multiple workloads. I actually had a, a, a similar question because I noticed that in one of your plots you had your overheads negative. So if you, you were uh, drawing a line at one and some of your workloads were actually faster. So uh, yeah, is it calculics or whatever? Is that, um, yeah. yeah. So is that because you actually managed to make it faster? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, let's thank our speaker again and go to the last talk of the day.